Welcome to the Windy Hill Windsock. With me, the solution, and joining me today is Fiona. It's good afternoon. Um, this time, isn't it? Rather yeah. than the evening, because we usually record this the night before, but somebody has a very raging social life and was out out on the town last night, huh? Yeah, all the, but I have tried to tell you, let's not let's not stamp it with a date or a day because we don't know when this gets released. So people listen, and people listening to this in the morning don't care what time of day it is that we're recording. Does that make sense? Yeah, but should I write, have, should I write this down? We have regulars who who wake up on a Friday morning and hang out for it to be released in the afternoon. So that actually leads me to a, a really good point. We've had more feedback from last week's forecast than any other. I think any anything else that we've put out, you know. Oh, last geez, I can't. I can't think why. I just, yeah. I just can't put my finger on it. So for those who didn't listen, go back and have a listen. We did do Fiona's Couch. We kind of debuted it um, officially. Some people loved it. Some people said no, nah, it was too much. I think. I think the solution is what we'll do is we will. No pun intended, by the way. Um, we will do the normal the normal forecast at the end. It will be an abridged cast any, uh, uh, couch anyway. So just one one question this time. Yeah. And it will be fairly tame for those people that found the content a little bit too um, <laughs> uh, blush inducing, shall we say? Yeah. Apparently, <laughs> blood was pumping. A little too people, R-rated. Yeah. In people's cheeks. I hasten to add cheeks. Wow. Oh, um, um, so, no. yep. yes, anyway, let's go to the ch -ch -ch changes and there's not many. Brian omitted, is he omitted though, is the question. Um, and in is Menzi and I think, look, I've done a 180 on Menzi. I was certainly wrong when I said he's not up to AFL standard. I think we missed him last week as much as he wouldn't have made a difference. He's... Um, He's earned the right to be picked in the team, I think. What do you think, Fiona? Will Brian actually be brought in late or is he omitted for real? And whom of the emergencies, Shield, Cox, Hind and Brian, do you think might be the sub? Um, I actually really liked the changes, or change, I should say. Um, it should, I, it should, it should change. That's right. I, 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 I think we go with one, one ruck. I think the inclusion of Peter Wright the last couple of weeks has just potentially shown that the double ruck um, partnership doesn't necessarily work as well for balance of the team. Now, mm. I'm saying balance on a whole. So if that means that Langford has to go back to the back line and pinch hit if they're struggling, then I find that as an acceptable option given that Peter Wright's back. So I actually think for that's one reason. Second reason, Port Adelaide only run with one recognised Ruckman, um, Lysette, and then they've got Finn Lace and I believe who who's a forward but helps pinches out. Mm -hmm. So that's the second reason I think we should run with one one ruck. Um, I absolutely, Menzi should never be dropped, should not be dropped unless he's obviously dropped off form. But it, it just was, I think even Brad Scott would concede it was the wrong call to make him the sub. Um, you make Guelphie the sub before you make Menzi. I mean, yeah. Menzi, Menzi is a bona fide small forward. In the in that place, we have, we have Snelling and Guelphie who are not natural small forwards. So it, it begs belief why you would sub our only small forward, natural small forward, and yeah, not yeah. Two, two guys who are basically pinch hitting, you know, in the as small forwards. So anyway, I think you live and learn, and Brad Scott being the self-aware individual he is, would I reckon he would have conceded that that's not the right call. Um, so, yeah, I actually really like this change, and I, I beg of them to make Hind the sub. I wanted him to be the sub last week. I thought... Um, if we're at a tactical sub, he's brilliant because he can come on and he can inject some pace, break open lines, stop the opposition's momentum. Um, so I beg of them to make Hind the sub. But can I ask you, if Dylan Shield is fit, he's normally he's, he's in our best 18, so why wouldn't he be the sub? Or do you, do you feel he's not 
a hundred percent or that's my well I, I, i'm i'm a bit scarred last time they said he was fit he came in and was very poor and then went yeah. out again for another three weeks so i don't know it's, it's probably maybe it wouldn't hurt him to go have a bit of a jog around in the vfl would it i, I mean look if i'm reading between the lines i've got a feeling that he'll probably beat us up but i hope it's timed i hope they give shield another week of saying he's fully fit I don't know. If I, I think if he's fit, I'd, I'd pick Shield because I think he could be a difference maker. Uh, but are you are you wanting Shield to be primarily mid at the expense of Martin, Hobbs and Caldwell? Just come on and and um, add some like penetration with his kicking. Add some that or when he's at his best. What does he do? He. But you didn't answer the question. Do you want him to play predominantly mid at the expense of? Yeah. Why? What? No, but in the last quarter, why not? Why not? Oh, so you are, you're so sorry, my bad. Are you wanting to be the sub? Yes, yes. Yeah, that, oh, that's okay. what I'm saying. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay. Yep. That's what I'm saying. I, I could think if, if he's, if he's, let's say he's 80%, or let's yep. say he's not match fit, but he's physically okay mm -hmm. to play. Mm -hmm. I think he's a good type of player that could make a difference in the last quarter. See, Just when, ev when everyone's... Yeah. Oh, so, sorry, interrupt. When, it, when everyone's... Just a bit tired, slowing down. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, he's running away from packs. He's kicking the ball long into the into the fifty. He's ideally hitting a target or or two, um, and even kicking a goal or two. Yeah, and he has been. Let's be honest. He has been very, very a very good goal kicker this year. Um, mm -hmm. in, in comparison to his previous years, where he barely kind of hit the mark on that point. But that's why I like Hein because he's buzzy. He's got that buzzy energy about him. That's how he plays his football. And so I think that can really disrupt uh, Port's momentum, potential momentum. And this year it's been a it's been a year of momentum swings. That's why footy's been a bit hard. I mean, has it been hard to – sometimes it's hard to watch because even in the, the Adelaide-Collingwood game, at, Collingwood got this big momentum swing, kicked seven goals, and then Adelaide did the same. So it wasn't really back and forth, back and forth. So I think Hind has the ability to really stop, potentially stop and disrupt some momentum. But, yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't be upset. I just want uh, Shield to be at 100%, not not come in and, you know, be a mistake. Yeah, or I wonder if this is a – in his season, this is his last – Throw of the dice to see whether he can continue to play, or whether he what? becomes. Are you writing him off? I'm just I'm I'm questioning because again we know that the Essendon medical team like to be like to play ducks and let's call it not ducks and drapes look, ducks and drapes. <laughs> we know they like to play ducks and drapes. Well, yeah, what's wrong with him? What's what's his actual issue? He tried to come back, wasn't fit. If he tries to come back again and isn't fit. Is the surgery um, required? Mm. And may, maybe this is the last row of, of, the, of the dice around. Okay, is he going to play and be able to play this year, or, or does he um, maybe go in for some some season-ending surgery? Mm. I just repeated myself. <laughs> it's all right. Question for you. Yep. I hate the way people in in this world. People are so just overreact to whatever the latest thing mm. going on is. The narrative around Brian, he's extremely young for Ruckman. Can mm. we not throw him out and just just call him rubbish? I, th I think he's... I'm surprised got, to hear you take that stance. I know, even right? Even that you, called, you, you wrote off Menzi after two games. Well, in my defence, I thought Menzi was yet another too slow small forward. He just didn't have the physical. No, but I didn't think he had the physical tools. I think Brian has the physical tools. I think he's got the skill. He's just, mm. he's just as a ruckman, he's so ruckman a uh, different. They they develop differently. We know a baby giraffe basically mm. drops out of its mother's um, womb and can walk, mm. whereas a little baby human has to suckle on mum's teeth for a year. And 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 he's completely useless for the first eighteen, two years, three years of its life. It's mm. a similar thing, you know. Ruckman are a bit more like humans. How's that for an analogy? I'm grasping onto something. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm not fully computing all of it, but I'll give you. I'll give you some. Yeah. Look, I, on that, I um, I'm not convinced on Brian, but it's way too early. I I, I need to see more. Currently, from what I've seen, he. I'm not convinced, but it's way too early to write him off either way. I, I'm, you know, I uh, he needs way more, way more chances to to prove himself. He needs consistency. He needs to, yeah, you can't. The calls that he's not up to it or to, to trade him or drop him or, like, it's ridiculous and it's it's irrational. And as fans, we can, after a loss, I mean, after a loss, it, it was it was irrational, the irrational Brigade, we're back. You know, we're we yeah. and I made, it is out of control. It is out of control. I said a tweet about it. People just got it. It's it's absolutely ridiculous that we're even in contention for the eight. Go back eight months and think about what your prediction was. Think about your mentality eight months ago and how you saw you went into this season. I bet you said to yourself, "Oh, look, if I just want to see some kids improve, and you know, I just want to see some a bit of an idea of the game plan." That's what you said. You didn't say yeah, 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 yeah. we were going to be in contention for finals. So let's just hold the horses, hold the giraffes, hold all the animals, and just take a chill pill because we are still young and developing, and we are probably playing above, you know, our, our ourselves at the moment. Wise, wise words. Hundred percent agree. Mm. Uh, question for you then: Who is Junior Rioli going to belt? And knock it out. <laughs> Any thoughts behind the ball? Uh, uh, look, I hope he gets a very, 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 very nice little reception from Agree. The, from Agree. Um, the Essendon crowd. And it, I hope he, I hope they give him hell when when he's down in the cheer squad end. Um, Not only that, I hope the players. Yeah, um, I was about to say because because actually uh, when he actually hit Ridley because it was off the ball. The players, it's not like the players could remonstrate because they didn't even know. Ridley could have just accidentally knocked him. Do you know what I mean? So they didn't know that he was actually at fault. So you can't blame the players for not remonstrating them, but I hope they go to him and rough him up. Agreed. Agreed. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's turn to the sitting Joe and smoking Joe. For new listeners, smoking Joe is the guy we think is going to have an out-of-the-box game. He's going to smoke just like Joe Masidi used to. Uh and the sitting Joe is named after one Jay Danaher. And at the time he sat on the fence, which which is the most Joe thing ever. Uh, which one are you doing, Fiona? You all got the sitting this week. Sitting, okay. Mm-hmm. Who's your smoking? No, I've got the sitting. Sorry, my bad. You've got the smoking. Oh. <clears throat> yep. Oh, all right. Who is going to smoke? All right. We know... My predictions have been pretty uncannily good. Your your um win loss ratio is very very good. My oh, my win loss ratio is not great, but I think my sitting and smoking Joe is, has been good. Your smoking been... sitting Joe hasn't been that great. Well, I'm going to turn that around this week. Okay. <laughs> and this person is going to turn it around, and he's going to get back to the form that we saw at the start of the year. It is. The weed. Hey. I reckon he's going to come out. I think he's going to take about eight marks, kick two goals two. Of course, he'll miss some shots. Yep. Uh, but he'll kick two goals two, and he, his confidence will start to turn. And I think it might be because I think he might spend some time in the ruck and he might run around the ground and it might just get into him into the game rather than in the position in, he's in now where he, he doesn't seem quite confident enough to really present in the forward line. So it'll have a cascading effect. He'll spend some time in the middle. He'll get some some ball. He'll get, he'll go up forward and a couple of second-half goals, I reckon. Yep, what and that's my, that's my other motivation of just going with the one ruck. So it encourages Wiedemann and, and two metre to get into the game if they're lacking, you know. All he's got to do is, is yep. even if Lysette gets most taps, all he's got to do, he lays one good tackle on a midfielder and gets a holding the ball and he's up and about, you know. That's all it'll take. Um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping. Yeah, so no, and that's a great one. You know, um, you know, uh, uh, they've got to, people have got to stop with like 
potting in because I can't afford to adopt another one. I, I'm hang, on, hang on. I have Sorry. no emotional bandwidth left to adopt another soul. I'm already backing Jake Kelly and Archie Perkins who have been copying it. Wiedemann has to turn it around for me. You know who the you know what podcast you're a member of. You you do realise we've given him two Hennemans in the last two weeks. Yeah. I have refused to listen because I know that they have come from that and I have not listened. Christina warned me and I did not listen to last week. So there you go. You, you lost the listener. Go and on. you're all – you're all. are you kidding? You we should, can't you, afford it. You can't afford to lose one. You're blaming him. Look, go to the, under the other end of the ground and look at performances like Laverde. At least Wiedemann has hit a mark this year. Laverde has been very disappointing all year. I want Laverde. Laverde might, might be one of those people who doesn't win a Henneman all year, but then wins the Henneman of the year. That's, I'm sorry, but oh, yeah. oh, 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 he's there because he's offering hot, we lack height. Let's be quite honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as we ascertained, Baldwin is the same height. So I would be giving him the nudge ahead of Laverde. So anyway, moving on. Go, Weed. Um, so who's your sitting Joe? Oh, I'm sitting Joe. Look, I want to stay away from the players who I thought were, were quite – look, I'm going to say last week's Frio performance was a very – there were a lot of out-of-character, out-of-body uh, occurrences for one, you know, a few of Nick Martin's turnovers. And, and that's probably a bit harsh because we're so used to him being so tremendous that mm. when he does – miss a kick or two he, that he would normally get. He was order. sloppy. He was sloppy. Yeah, he was. Um, so, but it was out of body. Out of It was a very out of character yeah. for him. He nails yeah. those 9 out of 10. So I think there are a lot of them who did a lot of out of, out of character things. But so I'm, I'm hesitant to name one of them as the sitting Joe. I'm going to probably go... Oh, I'm going to go with Snelling. I think on the MCG is just... It's not going to be his friend if no. he stays in. If he if he gets dropped or goes to the sub, then well, particularly, bad. <laughs> particularly if we kick long to him again, like we did multiple times last week. The new Waller. I felt like I was watching a repeat. Like oh, he's, just, he's just replaced Waller in that. Who was who was the new Alan Davy? Yeah. Who was the new like? And how can you blame Wiedemann for that? I'm sorry, yeah. but it's yeah. irrational. The only guy who could take a mark who was li a little small forward was um, Menzi. Uh, I no, I was going to say back in the day was uh, Andy oh. Lovett. Uh, Lovett oh, could take a mark. Yeah, but he was special. Um, yep. Moorcraft, Moorcraft could take a mark. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, that's not a bad shout. I, I reckon there's some players need to lift this week. Not 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 because of what happened last week. But there's oh. a few a few guys like Sammy Durham. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yep. Bird, who you've mentioned. Yep. Um, Zerk Thatcher still, still. I thought he was better. He was. He had a better matchup, but you know he's got a, ta a tough task this week. Very um, tough. So there, yeah, there's a few players that need to. Look, I, 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 I did like. I think we'll see a response, and particularly you know this because you know how Brad Scott is very no fuss mm. in his press conferences, and he's a no fuss yeah. coach. He said in his press conference. Um, Oh, yeah, we we're, we were very disappointed with the midfielders and, and uh, I think, no, no, actually, they will bounce back. Like he was, he, he's not even entertaining that they don't bounce, bounce back. Mm. They are mm. bouncing back. Like that is fact. So I expect, I expect us to start the game very well. I will say that. And not that we didn't last week because we did, but Port are stacked. I, I look through that Port team and I know we don't do research here on this, on this pod. Um, so, you know, bad me, but yes. they are stacked. On every line, they are stacked. In the midfield, they're stacked. If you had to pick a weakness, you'd go maybe their back line. And the two things I remember from when we played them earlier in the year, so haven't played Bulldogs once, haven't played Sydney, but second time we're playing Port, so yay for the really? picture. Um, the two things I remember, the first thing was how how good Brad Scott was in sending Laverde to Alia Alia to you know, keep him accountable, yeah, yeah. which let Stringer of Wienerman off the off the leash, which obviously then went to water when he Langford had to go back. But I remember that. 
And the second thing I remember as Port being really good when once they got because I think we were leading until half like for half of that game, and the reason I remember thinking that the reason Port were able to get on top is that they were able to really keep the ball in their forward half. Mm. So I'm talking even from the even from the set just just beyond the centre in their forward half. Um, they were really able to keep the ball. If you were not, if if our um, if our backs didn't go quick from a kick in, port, the port players just set up beautifully, like a like a wall. So that's the two things I remember mm. from that game. Yeah, that's a shocking piece of analysis in terms of. Like, I mean, shockingly in depth, which is very off brand. Oh yes, uh, apologies. You, you, you do make some really good points. Uh, so then. Going to who we think will win. What's your position? It doesn't sound like you're confident. Look, it's, a... I think they, no, I think they're gettable. I think they're gettable at the G. I do. That Collingwood thrashed them earlier in the year at the G. And look, we're not Collingwood, but I do think they're gettable. But we have to be we have to be absolutely ticking. And I really hope they go with one ruck. I really, really hope. I think I think it will pay off. I want them to go with the one ruck. My heart and my head are saying different things. I'm going to go with a win, stupidly. It's not. It's probably not going to be right, but I'm going to go with a win and I'm going to say nine points. Uh, yes. Funnily enough, I... What are you saying? Because you're the, you're the... You're being good on this. Look, on... On the podcast on Sunday, the one you didn't listen to, very rudely. Well, stop, uh, stop trashing the week, and I'll be back. Uh, I'm you, missed, human. <laughs> you missed a song of the week. Um, another song of the week. I've got another one coming up too. I'm oh. just on fire. Uh, but yeah, I said we'll win. I'm actually not as confident now because it's a bit like you. I was looking at their team and. Yeah, I was just like, uh, I can see them kicking eighteen to twenty goals. Well, I feel I feel like if we if we do win, we'll have to kick a hundred points. I, yeah, I do feel yeah, like yeah, yeah, for sure. We'll, we'll have to be. Um, but the good thing is, is that like the only recognised defender, like the only one I'm particularly worried about is Alia Alia, and if he takes Peter Wright, which I don't actually think is a natural matchup for him, I, I think Wiedemann and Stringer. And Langford could could do damage. I think Scott would love it if two metres one on one out with a mm, exactly. But, uh, yeah, we were too. Hopefully, and that's another thing we need to sort out. Like we were too Pedro right centric. But, but I couldn't even point. tell. I couldn't even tell. Were we? Because we were just bombing it. There was no like I couldn't even tell well, if it was going towards Peter Wright because there was no there was no um, awareness there was no desire to to actually find a target or put it like some of it he likes it high right he likes it high but on top of his head yeah I, but I think that was the target I think this the, the <laughs> yeah, how do you yeah. know? I think I think ra- rather than looking at the x axis <laughs> we looked at the y axis and we just we just went okay. Kicking to two metre is just kick it high, and because he's taller than everybody, then voila, he'll just take the mark every time. No, so I thought I thought it, it was work. I thought it was thoughtless pressured, just bombing it. Get, get, oh. get like a hot potato, get it out of my hands. That's what I felt like, but maybe you're right. I, no, no, I, I, I actually, I'm not thinking there was any thought into that at all. If that's what they genuinely thought, then they're morons. No, yeah. they they just bombed it long. And it was like a, a bomb and hope. Bomb and, yeah, bomb and hope. Somebody, yeah. anybody gets on it, and that it's not going to work if they. And Wiedemann and Langford and Stringer might have to sacrifice a bit of their games to to make space. Well, well, I think there'll be lots of space for them. Yeah, because the you you love us at the G, so I love us at the G. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would love Langford to stay forward and stretched, uh, stretch port. I just think they're going to score too many. I think our back line is going to be exposed. Yeah, and they got like their forwards are in very, very good form as well. Paul, Marshall, Dixon, yeah, yeah, Finlayson, yeah. very tall, accurate, and and they're kicking accurately too. But we are kicking accurate, accurately too. We've been good on set shots. Until last week, it wasn't it wasn't brilliant. We missed some shots we should have 
scored. Yeah. So we need to kick straight. Yeah. But yeah, we looked the, the the back line looked a bit clunky last week. Yeah. Uh, Do you think I know the overwhelming uh, opinion on that is that the unbalanced nature? Do you subscribe to that? Well, when or they played poorly, and then people look to well, we looked unbalanced. Well, maybe we just looked unbalanced because the guys down there. There was a couple of players that didn't play well. Kelly Kelly had a bad game. Levert again had a bad game. Uh, there, there was just yeah. And then and then of course the forward line was just oh, sorry. Our defence was under intense pressure because of the way they were just streaming out of the midfield. So you know. It looked unbalanced, it looked ungainly, it looked it, it didn't look good. Again, just as the forward line looked dysfunctional. But maybe it's because some players weren't playing well. Uh, because it is so system based, this yeah. uh, this game and you know, our 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 game plan is so system based. If there's one chink in that chain, the whole chain is falling down. So yeah. you can't get, you can't be a little off in this and I mean, I know that's what wins premierships, like system rather than, um, you know, system over something else starting with S. Skills system it's over system over like individual uh, brilliance, individual game. Um, but uh, yeah, they've all got to be on. And I think personally, I think it starts in the middle. And I think the midfielders set the tone. I thought our clearances were poor. I actually thought Parrish had a good first game back, so I wouldn't lay it on his head. I know his defensive running is not great, um, but I thought they all lacked defensively. Yep. System over stars, that's what I was going to say. Yep. Good. Go, yeah, good. Yeah, that's a good one. Like yep. Well, to those listeners... Like, so hang on, you didn't say. Are we winning or losing? Oh, no, I think we're going to lose by um, 20 points. Damn. You I know why that's... you know I went why I went a win this afternoon when I was thinking about it? Why? It's because, it's because I remember you like you loving us sick at the G. And so that's what got me over the line. So you're yeah. you're going against your Damn. I'm a little worried that we're about to go into a period of losing some games, but hopefully I'm wrong. Yeah. Hopefully I'm wrong. Um yeah. To your yeah. point, it, we've awesome. already <laughs> we've already exceeded <laughs> expectations. We have, but that would be very, very upsetting. It would. It would. Now, to those who said we didn't talk enough football, there you go. That was solid football. We were talking stats. We, oh, we were who talking, are we? <laughs> who are we? We were talking game plans. We were talking systems. Um, I mean, what what more do you fucking want? So we... We're just going to do no, no tales of the sauna. We're just going to do one, one Fiona's couch question. Have you sifted through and got a good one for me? Yeah, I've got a good one. Are there any other thoughts you have on the game before I ask that question? Um, oh, my other thought was, what about if I haven't checked the forecast, but if it rains, does that give us a bit of an advantage? Is this your wild card? We bring back the wild card. No, it's a reverse wild card because I'm asking you. Um, I no, I just thought of it now because I'm looking outside at the dreary sky and it's looking very grey. And I don't again, I haven't checked the forecast for tomorrow night. But if it rained or if it drizzled, well, the forecast is crystal clear. Oh fuck. Okay, I was going to say that probably gives us a bit of an advantage. <laughs> but you know that probably means it'll rain. But it is going to be cold. Oh joy, yeah. joy. Yeah. It's 13 degrees tomorrow. But wear my thermals? Wear my thermal yeah. underwear, you're yeah, saying? Yeah, okay. wear, wear the thermal underwear. All right. All right. And actually, this is a point I wanted to make. Does Brad Scott put a foot wrong? Has he put a foot wrong in in his communication? Oh, and no. the way he spoke, he speaks. I don't think he has. And, I mean, he was always quite an intelligent, thoughtful guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even though he was a thug as a player, but even as a player, he was he he was thoughtful. I do think he, the motions got the better of him sometimes, as North coach, and they may well do again. But just his comments about the supporters and having support. Mm -hmm. He he doesn't. He never sounds contrived. He never sounds. He, the words aren't hollow. Yeah. It's not platitudes. He he just. Does he put a foot wrong? I don't think he does. 
90s communication because it's it's just it's a genuine i feel like i'm talking to his inner he's in a human do you know what i mean he's he's mm. he wears his heart on his sleeve and that comes out in press conferences completely he's he's a very no fuss and can be looks like he's got a very hard exterior but um yeah his words his words and i, I just can't see how that doesn't get through to any player like and you know as they said on the commentary the other week you can't it's hard to see any player who hasn't improved this year i would argue maybe laverty but we don't want to you know, uh, we've still got the year to go, so let's hope he picks up. Um, but it's hard to see any player. Like, even hearing Parrish's comments yesterday, I don't know yes, if you heard. Yes, He said, yeah. I, feel, I feel valued. Like, what more could any person want at their place of work? I feel mm-hmm. valued. I have clarity on where I sit. That is all you want from a, you know, from a um, from a place of work. So I, I, I can't I can't see. That's why I said to you a few weeks ago, I'm excited for the off-season and, how like you're tra- attracting free agents and and trading for mm. players because they want to come and play for someone who who communicates that well. Uh, I agree entirely. And his message this week was about the impact that the supporters can have. Yeah. Uh, and so hopefully, and maybe this is a wild card, is that we can just get a really, you know, big crowd. Yes. For, for basically a uh, an interstate game. And we saw the influence that the crowd can have on umpiring, as an example. Exactly. Um, let's let's put, your be- put your beanies on, put your thermal underwear on, put your yeah. socks on, and get to the game. It's a Saturday night. Cancel your plans. If you've got weddings to go to, fuck those. Just yeah. get to the G. Correct. Um, and just, just yeah. get them to save some of um, something about cake's cake for you. That's so right. Go to the wedding. Yeah. I'll, I'll bring you a slice to the G. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Correct. I've always got cake lying around. <laughs> All right. Now. All right. Here's my. Come on. Let, get, let me get. Let me get onto my couch. Hang on. Yeah, Fiona's couch. You can help somebody, a young person here. Okay. You ready for that? Yep. <laughs> They've even even started this, dear Fiona. Oh, it's polite. Dear Fiona, I've finished my degree and moving into, we don't know what degree this is, moving into the profession that I'm supposed to and that my family expect me to be in. However, I don't want to do that. I want to do something different. How do I tell my family? Should I be worried about what they think? And should I go for it or should I just follow the path that has been expected of me? Now, they don't give any details, but what's your advice? Uh, I, I, I chose this one because I think it's a good it's a good question, a really good question, because it's something a lot of us have had to, you know, do you do, you do the thing you really want to do or do you do the thing that you think you have to do? Well, I guess I am living proof uh, that you don't do what you think you have to do because that's exactly what I did. And, look, I won't say you never say life is wasted, but Mm. it was a very, very unhappy, lost couple, actually it may have been three, no, three years of my life. Um, It was the most, it was the unhappiest I've ever been. It was the most disingenuous chanted feeling um i did really well at school um got a very high end to score got into journalism did journalism um because i thought i needed when i was picking i didn't know what i wanted to do Mm -hmm. i've always been very creative by nature uh i didn't know what i wanted to do but i always was led to believe i needed an academic career to earn lots of money because that's what would make me worthy and acceptable um so i went to uni did journalism then did marketing hated it hated my life i hated university so you hate the university was the three years that yeah. you were miserable yeah. ah, okay. I, hated, I hated everything about it i hated the university life i hated everything like i could not find one thing that i enjoyed and then one night <clears throat> and i've always loved cooking and baking and one night mm. i um made I just made a very spectacular dinner and dessert menu. I just felt like doing it um, for my mum. And she made a passing comment. 
she just said, oh, this is so good. You should do this. You should do this professionally. And the next day, this was after three years into three years of the university, the next day I got onto a tram in the city, in the CBD, and and trammed down to William Anglers in the city, and I signed up and I enrolled into a pastry pastry chef um, apprenticeship, and that was all she wrote. So, and now, and now, uh, and that was 10 years ago. So, and now I have my own business, and obviously there's a lot in between, but Hmm. I, I cannot, I cannot stress this enough. It will always catch up with you. If you go down the path that you think you should do and not that which sets your soul on fire, it will catch up with you one way or another, whether that's a midlife crisis, if you if you, if you you defy the universe, what the universe wants for you for that long. If you're young now and you get to 50 yeah, and you have a midlife crisis, it will come out, it will catch up with you in one way or another. It will keep showing you, the universe will keep showing you signs of what you're meant to do. Mm-hmm. It will keep kicking you until you listen. Your life will not be, your life will be up and down. You'll never feel like you belong. You'll never, you'll feel like you're going through the motions. You'll never find workplaces that, that uh, you know, make you feel comfortable. You'll never feel like you're where you're meant to be. You'll question who you are and where you belong in life. And you know what? If money is what you're worried about, if that's, if that's really, if money brings you so much happiness, hmm. I truly believe that you will, you will make it so that doing the thing you love will make you that amount of money. I, I truly believe that. So I hope that answered your question in short. I reckon it answers the question unequivocally. And yeah. um, it was two people said this, a coward mm-hmm. died a thousand deaths. You heard yep. that before? Yeah. It, it was originally Shakespeare, but most recently um, Kanye West. <laughs> In, uh, we should not seat. take life. We really should not be taking life advice from that man. But okay. Uh, you know what? This is a real. This is a real conundrum for me because other than the Beatles, Kanye is my favourite artist. What? No. By we, far. We, we, no. We need his, to. No. His, his music is. Outstanding. But this is the thing. This is the whole thing separating artists from art. I have issues with it with Michael Jackson. I adore. I adore his art. I adore he, everything about his art. I can't stop watching his art. But every time I do, I feel guilty. Elvis Presley um, I like I adopted, want to adopted Priscilla Presley when she was 13, took her home, fucked her, and then married her as soon as she was old enough. A lot of people, that wasn't in the Baz Luhrmann movie. Wow. Yeah, that's not great, so, is it? You know, I just... I just, yeah, I can't. I don't feel, I don't feel right. I don't feel good. You're right. You're it's artist versus art. But anyway, um, great advice. We've again blown. Hopefully, that's not too much for people. We might, we I mean, might. Look, have... That's that's good advice at any point. And you know what? Even if you're 50 and you're you realize that that's what you've done your whole life, there is. It is never. It is never too late to drop everything change careers, no. change gears, and just it's going to take you a shit ton of courage, but I promise you the universe, and you're going to sound like, a, you're going to think I sound a bit airy-fairy here. I'm not talking about umming and ahhing and, and hoodoo. I'm just talking about the universe as a whole. It will it will come back. It will reward you. It will mm-hmm. reward you because you're currently not doing what you're meant to be doing. If you're not happy, if you're not feeling content, but it's going to take you courage. It's going to, it's going to, it's going to require you to be really, really fucking brave. Or in my experience, is even if you, even if you're just leaving a job, even if the next place isn't the place for you, it'll, it'll lead you to where you're meant to be. If you set that intention in that, not in a, again, not in a sit down and write journals and be, you know, we've discussed this in previous forecasts. It's, I say universe, but I mean in like the energy, the, the energy, right? Um, if you set that intention and you actually <clears throat> you start you start behave you start moving listening to your instincts your intuition and the you know, the, the higher powers will yep. oh no I feel like I'm I'm heading down the road and I'm losing some of the some of the very str- strong headed people here with my they're gonna think I'm some I need to no be no how do you, how do you think I built Windsoft Towers into the <laughs> multinational conglomerate, media conglomerate. <laughs> True. We have our own chief marketing officer, your head of catering, we've got yeah. general counsel, 
uh, it is a um, yeah, that was that was the law of assumption, my friend. Yeah, look, I mean, as a, the point of that spiel was to say it's never too late. It's never too late. You'll be you will, will be rewarded, but it does. It's hard and it's it's painful and a lot of things will drop off in your life. But at the at the other, on the other side of it will be what you actually want to be doing with your life. Beautiful. Well done. Great couch and great question. Great question. So Thank you them, for that question. Keep them coming. They they um, I keep getting them in the DMs. Very good. Some of them get bin straight away. Trust <laughs> me, I'm, I'm not going to be uh, like. There's some that will never ever be answered. So why why do you bother? But yeah. um, thanks thanks for shielding me <laughs> from those. I appreciate that. Most of, most of them been very good, very good. Very All right. Good. Well, on that note, thanks to everyone that listened. Check out the sponsor, something about cake. Uh, we'll be back um, probably Monday with the the new podcast. Hopefully, talking about the stirring win against Port. And uh, we'll see you next week. Bye.